Good morning, and welcome to the VetNet Entrepreneur Track for today's special live event entitled Succeeding as Civilians, EBV on 60 Minutes, a follow-up. My name is Mike Schenick, and I'm the VetNet Entrepreneur Program Manager here at the Institute for Veterans and Military Families at Syracuse University. Today we'll be discussing the EBV program, its history, and how it has impacted veterans to date. Um, why don't we go around and, inter and introduce yourselves. Again, my name is Mike Shenick. Jared, do you want to introduce yourself? Absolutely. Thank you very much, Mike. My name is Jared Lyon, and I serve at the Institute for Veterans and Military Families here at Syracuse University as the National Program Manager for the Entrepreneurship Boot Camp for Veterans with Disabilities, as well as the Entrepreneurship Boot Camp for Veterans Families, or EBV and EBVF, respectively. Very good. Kim, do you want to go ahead? I'm Kimberly Bernard. I have my own office, Bernard Law Office, and I'm a graduate of EBV from Syracuse in 2012. Mike Haney? Hi, my name is Mike Haney. I am the uh, Executive Director of the Institute for Veterans and Military Families here at SU. Uh, I'm also a, a vet myself, and I, uh, I started the EBV program back in 2006 when I uh, left active duty and came here to Syracuse. Very good. Thank you. Mirza? Hi, everybody. My name is Mirza Tihic. I'm Director of Sporting, Sporting Services here at the Institute for Veterans and Military Families, and I work with uh, our EBV graduates in their uh, po the post-graduation post providing technical assistance program. Thank you. And Rob? Hi, my name is Rob Mulaney. Uh, I can serve you uh, in 2012 as well. Um, I work in the DC uh, area. I'm uh, in the airport right now. <laughs> Very good. Well, thank you for joining us. Um, so today, like I said, we'll be discussing the EBV program, its history, and how it's impacted veterans to date. Um, we do have a question and comment uh, chat out to the right. If you do have any questions, we'd be glad to to address them. But at this point, I will uh, hand it over to Jared Lyon, and he'll get things going. Morning, Jared. Good morning, Mike, and thank you again for uh, for setting up this Google Hangout. It's an excellent opportunity for uh, not only us here at uh, the EBV program, but also a couple of our graduates um, to sort of talk a little bit about uh, the EBV program, uh, its impact, as well as its history. Um, I guess I'll start off by giving a quick overview for those that aren't familiar uh, with the EBV program itself, uh, and then we'll turn it over to, uh, to Dr. Mike Haney for uh, his uh, quick review of the history of the program. Uh, that said, EBV is a, a program that provides experiential training in entrepreneurship to post-9-11 veterans who have service-connected disabilities and a desire to start their own business. The program was founded here at Syracuse University in 2007 and to date has graduated uh, over 600 veterans uh, throughout the country, uh, teaching them how to not only start but also grow their own business. So experiential training. We provide EBV in three phases. The first phase is 30 days online. This is designed to try to get everyone in the class on the same page. Uh, we've had graduates of the program uh, with a wide range of academic backgrounds, uh, everything from uh, nothing more than a GED all the way up to a PhD and almost every degree you can think of in between. And we've also had all prior military ranks uh, attend our training. Uh, from E3 to O6 have graduated from the EBV training. Uh, that said, uh, the 30 days online is designed to sort of get everyone on the same page and allow us to really hit the ground running for phase two. After you completed the 30 days online, uh, you'll travel to one of our eight EBV national consortium universities throughout the country. Founded at Syracuse University, uh, we still serve as the national host for the program, but EBV is also offered at Cornell, Purdue, University of Connecticut, Louisiana State University, Florida State University, Texas A&M, and UCLA. EBV attendees can uh, pursue any type of business that they would like, everything from for-profit to not-for-profit, franchise, even the one-man show. Uh, one thing that should be noted is that uh, we have an industry-specific EBV at Cornell University, specifically focused in the uh, hospitality management uh, food beverage uh, industry. Other than that, uh, you can attend all other seven EBV universities and start any type of business that you're interested in. When you arrive on campus for phase two, this is what we like to refer to as 
the in-residency or the immersion portion of EBV training. Uh, the program is intense, and this is where we definitely don't use the term boot camp lightly, if you will. Uh, you'll be engaged in phase two on campus from approximately 7.30 every morning till about 10 o'clock in the evening every day. So it's intense, and it's a bit like drinking water from a fire hose, but during that period of time, we're able to cover a lot of ground in a really short period of time. And each day of training progressively builds upon the last, and it culminates in something that we call the venture pitch. This is where each of our students have the opportunity to pitch their idea for their business concept in front of a panel of experts. And during that time, they'll actually receive real-time feedback as to the viability of the business and pros and cons that the panel sees so that when our graduates head back home and go into phase three, they have a really good, clear understanding as to uh, their idea for their business moving forward. And that's when we go into phase three, or something that we call EBV TAP, or Technical Assistance Program. Uh, being a lot of veterans here at EBV, uh, we clearly can't survive without the use of our acronyms. So in our case, EBV TAP is an opportunity to provide 12 months of follow-on support to our graduates as they're getting their venture off the ground. And this is where we can uh, provide our graduates with a myriad of follow-on support services. Everything from mentor matching, in which we'll try to match our graduates with a mentor in their related industry, as well as some of the tangibles. You know, what if the business were to need a logo or a web design? We can facilitate with that. To some of the intangibles, such as uh, incorporation services or legal services, tax services or accounting services. And all of those things combined uh, is what TAP is, as well as providing uh, for a reach back of um, follow-on support services, which is managed uh, by Mirza Tich, which is uh, on the EBV or the Google Hangout with us right now. That sort of, in a nutshell, is the EBV training. Something that I always like to, to be clear about is that the EBV program itself is competitive, meaning that not all that apply are accepted. However, for those that are accepted, EBV training is provided at 100% zero cost. Uh, so we've gone out and secured the funding uh, to provide EBV training, like I said, at no cost to those accepted. Um, that's actually going to cover all of the airfare to and from the university. Uh, when you get on campus uh, for phase two, we all actually take care of your hotel accommodations. I know sometimes people think that, okay, I'm heading to a college university for eight days. Uh, they might put me up in the dorms, but you do get your own hotel room. Um, in addition, all of the meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner are covered uh, by EBV. Uh, we do eat family style as a class. In addition, all of the uh, course materials and the training itself is actually provided at zero cost as well. Our participants do not have to utilize any of their benefits to attend EBV, such as the GI Bill or Vogue Rehab. Again, EBV is provided at 100% zero cost to those accepted. And uh, uh, what I'd like to do right now is uh, kind of turn it over to Dr. Mike Haney uh, after I've provided kind of a, an, uh, an overview of what EBV training is itself. Uh, Mike, I'd like to, uh, to ask you to, to discuss a little bit about uh, the founding of EBV and uh, why you decided to, uh, to bring uh, EBV, tra EBV training to the world. <laughs> to the world. That, that's very dramatic, Jared. I like that, but I would expect nothing less of you. Um, <laughs> So, as you heard when I introduced myself, I'm a, I'm a veteran myself. I uh, served for 14 years on active duty as an Air Force officer, and when I decided to leave the military and uh, come to Syracuse University as an entrepreneurship professor, um, you know, I, I realized very quickly when I got here that there was an opportunity for us in higher education, and, and for me specifically, um, to leverage something that um, higher education does very well, which is teach, train, and inspire, and, and refocus that um, competency on uh, our veterans and their families. And as particularly um, in the context of entrepreneurship, you know, as, as many people realize, this generation of vets is making the transition to civilian life with disabilities at, at rates that are unprecedented in, in U.S. history. And if you understand business ownership and self-employment in this country, one of the interesting facts is that people with disabilities actually turn to business ownership at a rate 
um, much higher than others. And a lot of that is this, this idea of business ownership um, and the autonomy that, that comes with it, the idea of being able to craft a vocation um, in a way that accommodates whatever um, life issues, challenges, and opportunities that present themselves to you as a consequence of being both a veteran and a person with disabilities. That Really, this was my opportunity recognition moment. Here I was a vet and an entrepreneurship professor at one of the top entrepreneurship programs in the United States. Why can't we take, again, this thing that we do very well, which in this specific case, then teach people to go out and start businesses, why can't we take that and focus it on our post 9-11 generation of veterans and essentially provide a bridge for them to craft a post-service vocation for themselves through business ownership. And, you know, I was lucky in that when I went to the dean of the business school here back in 2006, um, with this with this idea, if you will, um, it was not a hard sell at all because Mel Stith, the dean of the, the Whitman School, is a veteran himself who served in Vietnam. He got it uh, right away and was very supportive. And we started designing the EBV program. And we brought our fo first cohort of veterans to campus um, in the summer of 2007. And it really has been a, a roller coaster since then. We have been expanding the program um, each and every year since then by bringing in more universities to be our partners in this effort. Um, and the private sector has stepped up in a, in a very meaningful way um, to help us fund this. One of my going in propositions for EBV is that it would never become a revenue generating tool for the for the university. This was going to be a, a social venture for us. So as Jared mentioned, we would find the means to fund this privately um, so that we were not going to represent a financial obstacle uh, relative to participation for for vets. So um, it, it really has been a remarkable experience and I think evolved into a, a remarkable program well positioned to to really make a difference for those veterans that want to go out and leverage business ownership as their post-service career. So with that I'll, uh, I'll use an Air Force term that was my 30,000 foot view of uh, where we've been and uh, what the journey's been like and with that I'll, I'll turn it back to the group. Very good. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Jared, I don't know if you want to go ahead and uh, get some kind of testimonials from from uh, Kim and Rob. Yeah, absolutely. And I think now is really a good time to turn it over to uh, Kimberly Barn in the fact that uh, she's uh, uh, actively running her business right now and has a client coming in today at 1130. Um, recently to share with everyone oh it looks like Pam Randall just joined us as well so um, recently uh, during this past summer's EBV that was run at Syracuse University uh, 60 Minutes and, and a crew uh, from 60 Minutes were embedded in our course and uh, and actually aired a wonderful story um, that uh, that aired last evening uh, that said uh, what I'd like to do real quick is uh, turn it over to Kimberly Barnard and I was wondering Kimberly if you wouldn't mind uh, sharing with us a little bit about your background uh, and then your experience in uh, in this past year's 2012 EBV class at Syracuse University. Thank you. I really enjoyed the EBV program that I went into. I wasn't quite sure when I first called you up when I heard about the program. I said, okay, I know I'm a disabled vet, but am I really qualified because I already have my master's and doctorate. But what I wanted was just the confidence that I could step out on my own and not have that salary backing me up and all that. And I actually got that from the EBB program. Um, a lot of the material covered was stuff I covered in my graduate courses and it was a good review because it had been a few years, uh, quite a few years since I had been in um, college and taken those classes and it was good review, very excellently given. But it really changed my mindset. I realized I've always approached things as an entrepreneur but never labeled it that way. Um, especially in the military, I'd go into offices and I had to 
establish offices that had not been established sometimes or go in and we had big turnover and we'd have to see did we start fresh or is there something left that has some continuity and we always had to figure out how to get things and one of the first things I learned was don't say no say if you want to have this done here's the way to go about and get it done and that's the best way to address the generals <laughs> so um, that was a different mindset that I realized that other people didn't have and that was a good eye-opener for me when I attended the course and I came back very much on fire and was able to establish my office immediately and it has been very worthwhile so I've been trying to work with veterans um, since then because people find out that there are other veterans around and they come in and I've been able to assist as a conduit of network some times of different resources. If it's not totally a legal issue, I can then transfer it out. And that's just more of a pro bono side of the business. But it's my way of helping um, give back to veterans. But I really enjoy that. And I'm really appreciative of EBV helping me with my mindset to have the confidence of stepping out on my own. And also, it was really good just to be around military again, to be uh, with other ones. Even though we hadn't actually served together, it was all very... Um, very much like I was coming home when I came back to the class and found out that, that quite a few of us had links that we actually knew some of the same people that worked worked with. So that was really neat. And um, I I also had my logo done from EBB Tap and I've gotten lots of compliments off of it. Very appreciative of that because that was one burden I just didn't have to deal with. So I'm very thankful for the experience that I've been able to have. Kimberly, thank you so much for sharing that. And uh, one of the really interesting uh, aspects of, of my role as the National Program Manager for EBV is I fortunately get the chance to, to know our participants uh, pretty well before they actually attend EBV. And uh, something that I always describe Kimberly as is, is sort of a, a cautious fact finder. Um, you know, you're somebody that likes to get a lot of the information prior to just jumping into it. And Kimberly, if you, if you don't mind me sharing a little bit about your, your background uh, professionally and personally, um, Kimberly's actually actually an attorney. Uh, she served in the JAG Corps in the United States Army. Uh, but prior to that, uh, before making the decision to go to law school, the reason I say that Kimberly's a, a cautious fact finder, she actually served as a paralegal uh, prior to deciding or making that decision to go to law school. So she is somebody that gathers a lot of the information prior to jumping in. And Kimberly also was one of the, uh, the last students accepted into our 2012 EBV program, um, literally calling me the day before the deadline to apply. And uh, Kimberly, I, I was wondering if you wouldn't mind talking a little bit about uh, your decision to apply for EBB. I was been, it was my six month actual day of being out of the military for six months. And I got a call from our OIF, OEF, OND task force from the VA hospital, checking in at CN if I was bankrupt or homeless and how I was doing. And I said I was doing pretty good. But I had just decided that Saturday that I thought it was time for me to look into opening my own office because of some um, a lot of encouragement I was getting for that because I was actually cleaning up another law office and just helping up out other attorneys and then they said, hey, isn't it time for you to start your own? So I thought, well, if I'm going to do that, I want to have some kind of entrepreneurship coursework. And I knew from doing all the briefs in the military that there was something that was available through the VA. So when he asked me, is there anything else you can do, I said, well, what do you have on entrepreneurship? Is there something local? He goes, well, um, I think you should ask that. I got a flyer in the mail today or this week. Let me send that to you. So that was 8 o'clock in the morning. I was able to get to the computer to open up the flyer at 1 o'clock, saw the one about women's veterans, said, oh, wow, this is wonderful. This is great. It'd be, I can go to this, and it's just the cost of me traveling and um, I think it my stay there, I wasn't sure, but it was a little bit of cost, but not a great big cost. And then I opened up the one for disabled vets, and I said, this has got to be too good to be true. This is exactly what I want, and it's no cost factor because I knew I had the big um, fee, the big cost of opening my own office, so I was going to have to be very tight-fisted. And um, I called up, and it took me an hour to get through to Jared, and the first thing I asked was, am I really qualified? And he encouraged me, yes, it was, but then he said, but... Um, you would need to submit for the one that's coming up this month. I only have one seat. You're going to have to submit this in the next before five o'clock. And it was by this time after two o'clock, and I said, "Okay, I'll see what I can do." And I called you, I think, a little before five, and said, "It's been submitted." And you said you'll get back with me the next day. 
which which was a, which was a really uh, uh, a trial by fire for you. There wasn't much uh, deciding there, so I know you were a little out of your comfort zone. But again, just so thrilled that you wound up joining us, um, Kimberly. Kind of the last thing that I wanted to cover with you, because I know that you do have a a client coming in, is uh, is your business was actually shown as some of the uh, the B roll footage during yesterday's uh, last night's sixty minutes uh, program. Um, Talk with us a little bit more about that because they actually showed the ribbon cutting of your business. So um, how quickly was it that you left EBV training at Syracuse uh, in early August 2012 um, and sort of getting home and, uh, and getting your, your venture off the ground and tell us what that was. Well, mine was very quick. Um, I did have office space available um, by the time I went to EBV. I was actually doing some of my studies in my office, even though I didn't have clients. Um, so I was studying up there. And so I had clients within the week after me coming back. Um, not a whole lot, just a little here and there. I didn't really feel like I was fully employed at that point. But I was starting to get my name out. And I did have, I was registered with the Secretary of State. So I had my business actually registered within Let's see, I started EBV the week after I called you, so within that week, I started getting the legalities of it taken care of, but I didn't have the actual clientele because I wanted to do my research, and um, they started coming in, so I would say within the August, I was up and running with clients. Um, I did have a death in the family, so I took care of the estate for that, and that's about the time 60 Minutes called and, and asked me how I was doing because they followed up with all the different participants of the class, and I said, well, I'm trying to plan an open house, and... Um, so he said, well, when will that be? And I said, well, I think it will be. And I gave a date. She goes, well, when you get that certain call me. I'll be there. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> so that then put the fire under me. And I got it together. But I was very fortunate. The Chamber of Commerce had told me that if I wanted to do a ribbon cutting, they would do it for me. So they had all the props, and they got the word out. And they worked right behind me. And uh, the Chamber of Commerce actually invited the people, and I have helped spread the word about the open house. The mayor and other city council came, and so I had a lot of support. We had almost 200 people show up for the, um, between 150 and 200 was the counts that we received for the open house. So it's in my little town of 4,000, that's pretty good. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, and thanks again for sharing that. Uh, Dr. Haney, I was wondering, do you have any uh, uh, parting questions for Kimberly before she goes for her client appointment? I don't. I don't have any questions other than to say how proud we all are of you, and uh, you know, look forward to big things to come. Thank you. Excellent. So, what I'd like to do next, and uh, and and Rob Delaney, I'm I'm not sure how how well your microphone is working. Do you do you feel it's well enough to talk a little bit, or would you like to continue to just listen? I know you're currently in an airport. And. Go ahead, Rob. Rob may want to unmute your mic, Rob. Well, Rob's currently in an airport, so I understand that you might be having a little bit of technical difficulty. So what I'd like to do at this time is jump over to, uh, to Pam Randall. Hi, can uh, you hear me? Pam uh, is one of our, yep, we can hear you loud and clear. Uh, Pam is one of our EBV 2012 graduates at Syracuse University, and she was one of the three students that was actually profiled during last evening's 60 Minutes profile. Um, Pam, I know you came on to the discussion a little bit late, so at this time, if you wouldn't mind giving us a kind of a quick overview of your background and uh, what drew you to the EBV program. Well, I retired from the Air Force as a lieutenant colonel in uh, 2010, and I moved to New York to be near my parents to start being able to help them out. And when I moved to New York, I didn't realize that the market in New York was as bad as it was, and I found myself as a retired lieutenant colonel unable to find work. And I couldn't even get a menial labor job up here in New York. So uh, I kept seeing these flyers, and about a year before I even applied to the program, I get a flyer about this EBV thing. I go, yep, that's great, but I've got to find a job. And then I'd, I'd see it again, and it would show up, and I'd go, Yep, that's great. I've got to find a job. And my parents started talking to me about it. And I kept, it just kept coming up. And I went, you know, it would be wonderful to start my own business, but I don't know anything about running a business. And then sure as heck, it comes up on the TV screen during an advertisement. And it showed up at, uh, at one of my appointments to, you know, job hunt. And I thought, well, this, this is hitting me in the face too often. I'm going to go ahead and apply. And so two years almost uh, 
after I retired, I applied to the program and was fortunate enough to, to get in and turn my craft and my hobby into a viable occupation. <laughs> very cool, very cool. And I, I noticed during the 60 Minutes episode that they actually uh, showed you honing said craft uh, while you're doing some of your leather working. Uh, tell us, what was that experience like having uh, the 60 Minutes crew come out to, uh, to your residence and, and your shop? Well, it was, it was really amazing to show my skill or my craft and uh, I agree, it, it sort of put the fire under my tail because, you know, it's easy to, you know, you're at the top of that, that uh, when you're at, at EBV or at the top of the roller coaster just waiting for the push and 60 Minutes was definitely the push to get going because almost as soon as I got out, you know, through the program itself when we did the, uh, the pitch to, hey, when can you be ready? And it was like, whoa, the whirlwind has happened. So it was really neat to show people that there are options out there. And actually, my phone has been blowing up ever since uh, with people wanting to know what I can do. So it's and, and asking me, a lot of my military friends have been asking me about the program itself. So I told them to log into this. Absolutely. <laughs> And uh, actually, that's a, that's a natural place to mention that our phone has been blowing up as well here uh, at the EBB National Headquarters at Syracuse University. So for anyone that may be watching today's Google Hangout, uh, whether real time or later on as a YouTube video, uh, if you're interested in learning more about the EBV program, uh, you're welcome to send us an email at ebvinfo at syr.edu. And I'm wondering if uh, Mike Shenick or uh, Jim Powers might be able to, uh, to type that in. But again, it's ebvinfo at syr.edu. And someone from our team will be in touch with you very shortly uh, to follow up. Now, uh, one thing that I'd like to talk about is sort of some of the, uh, the success rates of our EBV program. And currently, uh, nearly 70% uh, of our graduates will actually go on to start their own uh, business inside of the first four years of graduating, as the EBV uh, episode uh, on 60 Minutes pointed out. Um, now, something that, that's kind of interesting is, is people will often ask, uh, what happens to the rest? And um, actually, I'd like, uh, like Dr. Haney to, uh, to mention um, sort of those outcomes, and then I'd like to turn it over to uh, Rob Delaney. Uh, who recently shared with me uh, some uh, personal choices that he's made after leaving the EBV program. So, Mike? Sure. Um, you know, one of the interesting things, when we started the program, um, as you would expect, when we would talk to people outside the program, media and others, about um, the, the outcomes and the, and the performance metrics, everyone jumps right to, you know, how many have started a business, how much revenue of those businesses generated, et cetera. And, you know, I get that. That intuitively makes sense because that's, the, you know, obviously it's a program um, with the espoused purpose of helping veterans start businesses. But one of the other interesting things that we've come to realize as a consequence of the program is that um, it's not, that in and of itself is not the only aim an outcome that's important relative to what the EBV experience is about. Um, you know, I think we under we underestimate uh, the the sometimes how hard the transition from military to civilian life can be. You know, you heard on the sixty minutes piece, and it's even come up a little bit here. But you know, it's it's more than just a change in vocation; it's a change in culture. And it's a change in um, identity in a, in a lot of respects. It, you know, this idea of growing up in a military, you know, my entire first 14 years of my, quote, adult life, you know, I was, a, I was in the military. I was a military officer. And, you know, you, and all of a sudden when that family and that, and that culture and that support structure is not there and you're now trying to sort of feel your way through um, that that transition and, and how to um, replace what you don't have anymore in terms of um, that sense of meaning and purpose, et cetera, with something else. That, you know, that's a challenging transition for a lot of folks to make. It was a challenging transition for me to make. Um, 
And what we've realized through EBV is that as we think about the impact that the program has, um, those business ownership metrics are important, but then there are also outcomes and, and things that our graduates are realizing and doing that are also equally important. You know, a good one is education. Um, the, we, we talk about, and Jared mentioned the fact that our EBV program makes no, um, you're eligible for the program if you have a GED, a high school degree, a PhD. It doesn't, you know, we don't care about um, prior educational background. What we care about is convince us that, you know, going, at, you're going to make the most of the program and going out and starting a business is what's important to you. But where I'm going with all of this is many of the vets that come through our program don't have, for example, college degrees. And come to us with really no expectation that higher education, let's say, is in the future. But, you know, then they participate in the experience. They end up on one of these college campuses and come to the realization, you know what, maybe this, maybe this college thing is something I can do and it's maybe it's something that I should do. And so we have many of our graduates that come through the program with the idea that um, they're going to turn around and leave the program and start a business, but many of them say, you know what, maybe I'm going to, before I launch that business, um, I'm going to go back to school. I'm going to get a degree, you know, wh whatever it is. And, and I count that as a, um, as a win for the program. Um, similar things in terms of what I'll call relationship kind of outcomes and that, you know, veterans who come to our program that may be struggling one way or another in terms of um, sort of their their outlook on life and their future, et cetera. The, the program has a way, and I'm not even sure how it happens, but of helping people sort of find that path and that, that sense of meaning and purpose. And, and again, you can't, you can't quantify that in terms of, you know, checking a box that someone started a business or someone, you know, generated a million dollars in revenue last year, but I count those kinds of outcomes as equally important relative to the more tangible business kinds of outcomes. Absolutely, Mike. And, and in doing my job for the past year and a half, I, I've got to sit through a lot of our EBVs and listen to uh, some of our world-class uh, professors on entrepreneurship and small business management, such as Dr. Mike Haney, who you just heard from. One of the quotes that I, I take away from uh, all those sessions is, you know, entrepreneurship is sort of this great equalizer. Entrepreneurship doesn't really care how many degrees you have hanging on your wall or what your rank was in the military or, or how much life experience you have. Um, so that's one of those uh, sort of those great equalizing effects that entrepreneurship does have, which I think is, is really powerful and is, is very evident with our graduates. Um, that said, we do have a, a good representative uh, representation of the military today, uh, myself uh, being prior Navy, uh, Mike and Pam, uh, prior Air Force. Oh, you've uh, also heard from Kimberly Barnard, who's Army, and I'd like to turn it over to uh, another another Army member, uh, Mr. Rob Delaney, who, uh, when we talk about this education side of things, um, myself, I, I'm prior enlisted, so I got out of the military without a degree, um, and, you know, instantly when I joined the workforce, became a non-traditional student, and did the same thing, uh, started one of uh, my own business as well. Uh, Rob is not only a non-traditional student, but uh, brings two unique perspectives of military service, uh, both as a former uh, senior NCO as well as a commissioned officer. So, uh, Mr. Rob Delaney, I'd like to uh, turn it over to you and, and talk about uh, both your experience with EBV, uh, why you decided to apply, and, and sort of what's been going on since you uh, graduated the program in 2012. Thanks, doing what they're saying. Thanks, Jared. Um, I retired in 2010 after serving 21 years, and like Jared mentioned, I was a, uh, a former non-commissioned officer. I spent the first 10 years uh, of my service enlisted, um, and then the next 11 years as a commission officer, uh, infantry officer in the U.S. Army. So I retired in 2010 and immediately went to work for a defense contracting uh, company. It was a startup. Um, you know, me and five other uh, guys uh, started the company and, you know, been with that company um, since 2010. Uh, and I was really wondering about like the nuts and bolts.
basics of, of how to run a company, and, and I wanted to get, uh, you know, a solid found foundation. So right off the bat, I went out and I did the, the project management professional, the PMP certification, as sort of like a baseline. And uh, but you know, I was I was going through a discerning process of, of what I was going to do. Was I, you know, was I going to go into a graduate program? Uh, and quite literally, I stumbled across the EV, EV uh, V program, and I was like, wow, this is, you know, uh, quite literally, this seems too good to be true. Um, so, uh, you know, I said, well, somebody has to be, you know, get selected. So why why not me? Um, so I put in the application, and uh, lo and behold. I was able. Uh, I got accepted in the program, and and uh, and as Jared mentioned earlier, it, it is like drinking uh, from a water hose. It it is a very demanding uh, program, both the online portion and uh, and the resident portion. Um, you know, you are constantly learning. Um, Mike was talking about at, at no cost. Um, that you know, I was fortunate enough or unfortunate enough to not have my bags for the first three days of the program, um, luggage lost, and uh, the kind folks from EVV literally uh, from the airport right to, uh, right to a, uh, a mall and, you know, completely outfitted uh, me and a, and a couple other, other of the guys uh, with clothing uh, so I can, you know, make it through the next couple days and, and you, know, you know, everything quite literally uh, to include hygiene products. So at and you know didn't bat an eye and just a just an amazing experience. Um, the network, uh, the networking opportunity, uh, getting together with my 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 peers, uh, veterans there uh, at Syracuse was just amazing. Um, still keep in touch with uh, with you know many of the folks uh, that I went to the class with. Um, you know, a couple highlights were um, I went and volunteered with a, uh, a veterans uh, organization and uh, myself, uh, Johnny Morris and Brad um, went out and uh, we attended a, a four-day hunting event uh, for veterans and wounded warriors uh, and both, you know, Johnny and I were hunting together and we, we were both were fortunate enough to, uh, to get some, uh, you know, to full score uh, deer, uh, which was a, a, a great a great thing, uh, but it was just even more great just being able to hang out with those guys because uh, those of you uh, that know Brad and Johnny, they're uh, they're pretty they're pretty uh, great Americans. Um, so going back to what Mike was talking about and my discernment going into a graduate program is I was really looking hard at going back up to Syracuse because I really liked it. I liked school. I liked the uh, the, the, the instructors. Um, it just seemed like a really good fit for me. Um, and I was uh, considering doing the IMBA program, uh, and uh, then you know I was like, okay, well I'm going to be on the road. There's a commitment to go up to New York, you know, pretty, you know, fairly often. Um, not too bad though. And I started looking a little closer to my to home uh, in the Northern Virginia, Virginia area, and um, applied to and was recently accepted into the George, George Mason uh, Executive MBA program. Uh, with a concentration in uh, national defense, um, you know that's the industry that I work in. Um, uh, my fellow classmates, it just actually kicked off this past weekend. Uh, went through orientation with them, uh, got you know hooked up with my cohort team, and uh, and you know so you know EBV sort of pushed me into that direction, uh, and I'm just very thankful and, and grateful to have uh, had the opportunity to, to attend. Thanks a bunch, Rob. I really appreciate you sharing your experience. And uh, to speak to experience, uh, we like to refer to EBV as an executive level experience. And really what that means is that when you come to EBV, uh, we try to teach you as such, as the executive, as the, the business owner um, for your new business. Um, that, that said, you know, uh, like Rob mentioned, uh, we do take care of you uh, at every step of the way. Um, something else to point out to anyone watching today's Google Hangout is uh, the diversity in location. Uh, often folks will ask, you know, I notice there's only eight EBV universities and, uh, and one doesn't happen to be nearby me. Well, on today's uh, Google Hangout by the participants, uh, we've got Kimberly in Kentucky, uh, we've got uh, Rob in, down in Virginia, and we do actually have Pam in New York. Uh, the thing that I'd like to point out is that you don't necessarily have to live near an EBV location because, again, if you are accepted in EBV training, uh, we do take care of the expense of uh, transporting you uh, to the university via airfare. 
And uh, as Rob pointed out, even if your luggage, uh, unfortunately, is lost on your way uh, in route, uh, we will be able to take care of you from there. Something I'd like to do now is, uh, is speaking about that experience. We've talked a little bit about uh, the structure of the experiential training that EBB is. And one thing that's mentioned is it is a bit like drinking water from a fire hose. Because again, uh, we focus on training that's very similar to the way that uh, we had as, uh, as veterans when we were on active duty. When you're attached to a schoolhouse, your job uh, while in training is to learn. So from sun up to sun down, uh, you're in the schoolhouse learning uh, your job to then, uh, in my case, head out to the fleet or uh, head out to your unit, uh, as other branches might say, uh, to receive a little on-the-job training. And then you're really ready to do your job. EBB is structured in a similar way in the sense that phase one is 30 days online. Phase two is an eight-day in-residency or immersion program on one of our eight university campuses, followed up by phase three, which is our EBV TAP, uh, sort of the after action uh, support after you've finished uh, EBV in phase one and phase two. Uh, that said, I'd like to turn it over very briefly to Mirza, our Director of Employment Services here at the Institute for Veterans and Military Families. And Mirza, at this point, I, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more in depth about what EBV TAP does provide and maybe some of the, uh, the common services that you see are used by EBV graduates around the country. Thanks, Jared. Uh, the EBV TAP already stands for Technical Assistance Program uh, provides technical assistance, ongoing support to all our graduates uh, across the nation. Uh, we are leveraging a lot of our corporate partners, like uh, we have a great partnership with American Corporate Partners, provides mentoring for our nation's veterans. Uh, currently, for example, there is a waiting line. However, if you're an EBV graduate, uh, there is no waiting line, so we we can place somebody within from within two to six weeks in a uh, mentoring role of being a, a protege, so to say, mentor and protege. The neat thing about us is we, they work with 40 Fortune 100 companies. So the mentors are usually executives, uh, general managers, or even entrepreneurs themselves within these companies. Uh, some additional services we provide include logo design, web design assistance. We provide uh, legal assistance if somebody needs uh, legal support. We, we work with one of the largest um, legal firms in the world to provide pro bono assistance. Uh, we also have a, a large database of successful entrepreneurs, uh, CEOs, and presidents of corporations across the nation that also provide mentoring services per needed base. Um, and also we work with um, different lenders. We work with uh, uh, Kiva Zip, which is a micro lender. We work with uh, Bowfly.com, which is an online um, mall, so to say, of, of financial institutions. They work with about 4,000 um, financial service providers from venture capital groups to uh, wealth management, banks, and so on. So we provide um, financial assistance as well. And of course, we provide any assistance needed to write the business plan, develop strategic plan, and basically anything that's needed to help our graduates move forward to grow the company and sustain that company. And I think uh, the best would be that if uh, either Pam or um, Robert want to share any of the experiences they've had with uh, EBV TAP. I hope they have used it. Pam or, or Rob, have you guys used any of the services thus far through EBV TAP? This is Rob. Uh, actually, I haven't used any of them. Um, uh, we're, but, you know, Jared, you know, our company's pretty well established, and uh, you know, but still LinkedIn, know it's available, uh, and all the great resources that that uh, TAP provides. And how about you, Pam? I've still been working on getting a formalized business plan to them. So um, it, my my business has so morphed so much that it seems like every time I get it started, it's changed so much that I keep starting over again and, and building it. That's a really good point. And uh, I know that, um, that Kimberly had to jump off. Uh, she actually had a client coming in today for an 1130 meeting. Uh, but Kimberly recently just got her finalized logo uh, returned back from the EBB TAP services and it came out really good. Uh, but something that I, I wanted to, to talk about uh, with, with you, Pam, is you bring up an interesting point. 
Um, after the 60 Minutes episode aired last night, I, I was uh, so lucky to get a phone call from Pam, and uh, we got the chance to talk. And Pam, you shared some really good, good advice for a veteran that may be thinking about starting their own business, uh, uh, sort of to the lines of, um, you know, sort of being open to uh, something different than what you initially started out with. And I was wondering if you could elaborate on that a little more. Sure. Uh, when I went through the EBV program, even during the program itself, because of all the experience with these, these great people who run this program, uh, the business started to morph even then because I had the idea of saddle and tack repair. That's what I'm going to do. And Jared actually told me before I even came there is to keep an open mind. And then it became a mobile saddle and tack repair. And then as I was starting to get the business started, Suddenly, I found myself making custom-made halters because there's horses out there that are hard to fit. So then it started to change from to that, and now all of a sudden, I am repairing horse blankets. Never even dawned on me because they aren't made of leather that I'd be replacing or repairing horse blankets. So it's the the prospects of of what you'll do with your business. If I had been so focused on saddles. I never would be having a business at all, probably yet, because I haven't really worked on any saddles yet. I've done everything but saddles. So by keeping the open mind, yeah, I can actually get a business up and running and fill a niche that hasn't been met here. Which is kind of the whole name of the game. So uh, well done, Pam, on that. Uh, what I'd like to do really quickly is um, we're, we're getting ready to, uh, to wrap up here on today's Google Hangout. But if you're just joining us, uh, currently we're, we're talking uh, with a few of the folks from the Institute for Veterans and Military Families here at Syracuse University's uh, Entrepreneurship Boot Camp for Veterans with Disabilities, or EBV for short, is what we call the program, as well as some of our 2012 graduates. Um, we've got still with us right now Pam Randall and Rob Delaney, um, who, if uh, you were tuned into 60 Minutes last night on CBS, uh, would have seen uh, their national television debut as, uh, as we saw them up on the screen and in our living rooms. Um, what I'd really like to do, Pam uh, and Rob, is if I could get your, kind of, uh, your final thoughts on EBV, one, and your biggest takeaway, two, and the third thing would be uh, any advice that you might have have uh, to a veteran out there who may be watching and thinking of starting their own business. Uh, Pam, we'll start with you. Okay, my biggest takeaway is it was absolutely the most wonderful experience I ever had and I wish I had actually applied the first time I ever saw it, uh, saw any advertising about it because it is such a wonderful uh, program. It is a fire hose, absolutely. I think I was at breakfast by 6 or 7 and rolling back into my room at 11.30 at night. Uh, but you don't really feel that tired because the energy is so intense. And they really get you thinking about all the possibilities. So if you think you can't do it because you don't know anything about business, which I didn't, they actually so encourage you that you can. And then they stay with you, you know, through the EBB tap to make it so you, you don't lose hope or you, you think, okay, now I'm on my own, what do I do now? They, they give you that support. So it is, I absolutely highly recommend that anybody who wants to start a business or, or thinking about a business, go ahead and do this. And what was the third question? That, that, that does it. No, I, All right. B biggest takeaway and what you'd say to a veteran starting out. Maybe I added too many things to the there mix. There you go. Go for it. Absolutely go for uh, go for this program and, and follow your dreams because it's amazing. They really can come true. Awesome. And and Rob, if, if we could get your uh, your biggest takeaway from EBV and what you would uh, what what you would say to a veteran uh, that might be out there watching the hangout uh, if they're thinking about starting a business. The biggest takeaway is is uh, it was you know the quality of the instruction uh, to be your fellow students uh, just were amazing people. The instructors, uh, very top notch, top of the line, extremely professional. The material that they covered was, uh, you know, it's definitely world class. Um, you know, as far as, you know, reach, you know, having a little trepidation or being unsure about, you know, starting something new, that's normal. It's under, it's an understandable feeling, uh, but you can't, you can't win if you don't take the shot. Um, so, you know, 
definitely, if you're thinking about, uh, you know, you want a little bit more information, EBB is a great place to start. If you're wondering if, if you know, you're unsure about, you know, starting a new line of work, new business, um, you know, just, just put yourself out there and do it. Sounds good, brother. I appreciate that. Um, one last thing that I'd like to cover about the EBV training is, uh, is something I think that uh, really, really any group of veterans can relate to. And it's this, this saying that you hear quite regularly, and I, 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 don't, I, I, I don't think it's branch specific uh, all throughout the military. It's this concept that you never stop learning. Right, I mean that's something that I think every branch is uh, is tuned into, and EBV is the same way. So after you've completed phase one and phase two, the online and in residency respectively, and then gone back home and started working on your business and received the follow-on support services through EBV TAP, uh, we don't sort of end it there. Uh, one thing that I'd really like to get across is that uh, we say it uh, at all eight of our EBV national consortium universities across the country that EBV is a family and that once you've attended EBV you're really part of that family both for our EBV program as well as our EBV F program. Once you're part of the EBV family we're able to keep that going and tie true to this understanding that as veterans we know we never stop learning. So really kind of the, uh, the annual capstone event of EBV training is our annual EBV training and alumni conference. Uh, the first year we held it uh, was in Orlando, Florida in 2010, uh, followed up by uh, 2011, uh, we did, uh, our, uh, our, sorry, 2012 was in Denver, Colorado, uh, and then followed up by uh, this year, which will be in Dallas um, in late October. Uh, but the EBB National Training and Alumni Conference is an opportunity to uh, come together for a three-day conference-style training in which uh, we focus on growth track training. So where EBV is definitely going to be focused around that startup idea of starting your own business, the EBV training, National Training and Alumni Conference is your opportunity to never stop learning, to get follow-on support training from our training uh, professors, instructors, and guest entrepreneurs uh, to understand how to continue uh, to grow your business. Uh, so that conference will be in uh, Dallas this year, but in addition to the training, it's also an opportunity to, as Rob mentioned, uh, continue to expand that network, and as Pam mentioned, uh, to reconnect with some of those uh, veterans that you went through the EBV training experience with. So. Don't mean to put anyone on the spot here, but uh, Pam and Rob, are you uh, planning on joining us for the EBV National Training and Alumni Conference in Dallas this year? Sounds like a plan, Jared. Yeah, it does. Sounds like fun. Outstanding. Well, I look forward to seeing both of you again. And if you're just joining us for this Google Hangout today, uh, we just got finished uh, talking about the Entrepreneurship Boot Camp for Veterans with Disabilities or the EBV program. And to summarize, this is an experiential training program provided at eight world-class universities across the country to include Syracuse University, Cornell, Purdue, University of Connecticut, Louisiana State University, Florida State University, as well as Texas A&M. Uh, if you're a veteran specifically interested in starting a food and beverage uh, business in the hospitality management sector, Cornell University is our first industry-specific university. Otherwise, all seven of the other EBV universities in the National Consortium uh, would be more than welcome and are standing ready to provide training. Phase one is 30 days online, followed immediately by phase two, which is an eight-day in residency portion on one of those eight university campuses, and then 12 months of follow-on support through EBV TAP. If you're interested in receiving more information uh, from EBV, feel free to contact us at ebvinfo at syr.edu. Again, ebvinfo at syr.edu. At this time, I'd love to open it up for any questions uh, that may be out there from any of our viewers. Uh, Jim, do we have any questions? Yeah, I'll handle that, uh, Jared. Thanks. Um, first question we have is from John Linhart on Google Plus, and he asks, regarding the letters of recommendation, are these personal military or professional letters that are requested per the submission process? Yeah, John, thank you so much for the question and it's a good one. Uh, the requirements to apply for EBV are an online application uh, followed up by uh, uh, an up-to-date letter of recommendation 
uh, your disability status, as well as two letters of recommendation, which I believe to answer John's question specifically, uh, those letters of recommendation can come from uh, anyone personal or professional. The only thing that we ask is that they not be from a first degree family member. Um, so again, uh, they can be a, a military, professional, or personal letter of recommendation. Often as veterans, uh, when we hear LORs being required, uh, we'll often think back to that, uh, that two-star admiral or general that we shook his hand that one time and asked for him to write the letter of recommendation. Uh, something that we should point out is that uh, not so much does it concern us who the letter of recommendation comes from, more so it's an additional voice that can express your desire for entrepreneurship and really that's what we're looking for and really that leads me to uh, answer a question that's often asked about uh, the decision process for EBB. We like to base our decision process on what we call the whole person model. Uh, so really we're looking for uh, the whole person uh, that may be applying for the EBV program. So that's what helps us. The application is our opportunity to hear from the applicant personally. The two letters of recommendation are an opportunity to hear from two people that know you well and know your desire for entrepreneurship. The resume gives us just more of a chronological understanding of where you've been and what you've been up to since transitioning out of the military. And finally, uh, you'll actually conduct a telephone interview uh, by the host university that uh, you're being considered for. And, uh, and then our final decision is made based on a selection committee at each of the universities. Do we have any other questions, Mike? Yep, one more. Gabriel Lord, also from Google Plus, asks, do we apply for a specific date and location, or is that decided based on availability? Gabriel, that's a really good question. Uh, we like to, to sort of describe our EBV admissions process on something we refer to as the rolling admissions process. And really what that means is that uh, you apply for EBV at any time. There, there is no deadline. And really, I should uh, paint the picture a little bit more solidly. Uh, EBV itself, I like to refer to it as a season, which runs from February all the way through November. So the way to think about this is there's an EBV happening somewhere in the country, uh, February through November. So you apply and are considered first based on your geographic location. Clearly, we like to get you uh, to an EBV that's geographically closest to you. But as you can tell from our EBV graduates that have been on the, uh, the, the Google Hangout today uh, from Kentucky, from Virginia, and even uh, close by in upstate New York, um, our EBV students come from all over the country. Uh, that said, if you are interested in our summer EBV program, uh, that would be UCLA, Texas A&M, as well as Syracuse University, uh, we would need you to apply for the program no later than this upcoming Friday. So today's Monday, um, and as Kimberly Barnard pointed out, um, you can get everything together uh, within hours, um, but I would encourage you to apply if you're interested. Uh, we do have uh, seats remaining in our UCLA, Texas A&M, as well as Syracuse University upcoming courses. Uh, that said, if you're unable to submit your application for consideration to one of those universities, uh, you're more than welcome to be considered for, if you're interested in the food and beverage uh, industry, uh, Cornell will be this September, uh, followed by UConn, uh, which would be in October. Again, you could be starting any type of business, no industry-specific focus required. Uh, UConn would be in October, uh, followed up by rounding out our season at the University of Purdue um, in Indiana would be uh, early November. So that kind of gives you a picture of, of what we have. Do we have any other questions? Yeah, one last quest question, Jared, comes from Ernest Robert Robinson, excuse me, from Google Plus, and he says, I'm looking to start a television network. Will EBV be able to help me with that? Oh, uh, our Ernest, that's, that's an excellent question. And, and you heard Mirza mention that we do have mentoring opportunities uh, during the EBV tap. Now, the thing I should mention is that EBV is not going to specifically teach you uh, how to start a uh, television business any different from starting a law firm, any different from a defense contracting firm, to uh, even in, in Pam Randall's case, who's, who's staring back at me um, with a, a, a tact and bridle uh, type business. That said, EBV teaches uh, in broad uh, spectrum how to not only start but grow your business and, and the type of business is up to you. Uh, that said, it's uh, very interesting that you mention a television production or a television network company that, that you're looking to start, Ernest. Uh, one of our uh, graduates from the Syracuse University EBV program in 2008, I'd encourage you to Google him, uh, Mr. Brian Iglesias, uh, uh, Marine Corps 
veteran, um, is, uh, has started a, uh, his own uh, film production company. Um, also, he does uh, some television uh, uh, production as well. Um, he's responsible for the New York City Veterans Day uh, parade every year. Uh, he's done that for the past two years. And um, the interesting thing to mention is that this evening on campus here at Syracuse University, uh, Brian will be up from the city. He lives and works down in the New York City area. Uh, but he'll be on campus screening um, his documentary of uh, Chosun, um, the, uh, the story of the Marines uh, in the Korean War conflict. So um, yes, uh, EVV can teach you how to start any type of business you want. And then again, we do make every effort to pair you with a mentor, like I said, in the related industry. Uh, and yours, just off the top of my head, Brian Iglesias comes to mind. Very good. Thank you, Jared, for the uh, for the great responses to those questions. And uh, I don't believe we have any others. And unless you have any closing comments, I'll uh, I'll just run through a few kind of uh, housekeeping things uh, and close us out. Anything else you want to? Add, Jared? No, uh, just that uh, this conversation doesn't end. Uh, join us on uh, uh, Twitter and Facebook as well as sending any of your questions uh, to ebvinfo, again, at syr.edu. And I just posted that as well. Uh, would be happy to field your questions and, uh, and hopefully uh, have you apply for uh, any one of our upcoming 2013 EBV classes. Very good. Well, thank you, Jared, and a very special thanks to our EBB graduates, Pam, Kim, and Rob, who joined us today. You know, this discussion was really facilitated by you guys telling us about your experiences, so thank you. Um, you know, I'd like to close these always out by saying okay. please visit the Institute for Veterans and Military Families website at vets. SYR.edu. This will have additional information not just on the EBV and EBVF programs, but also on some additional educational programs that we that we offer here at the Institute located on Syracuse University's campus. Also, please continue to follow all the exciting things happening on uh, VetNet HQ here on Google+, as well as the basic career connections and entrepreneurship training tracks. So um, with that being said, uh, you know, again, my name is Mike Shenick, and from all of us here at the IBMF and uh, VetNet, have a great day.